Ben, for, for those of you who don't know him, he is one of the pioneers in this weird thing that we keep calling social entrepreneurship. So Ben, as a quick intro, would you like to tell our viewers a little about what you do with Rally with Downtown Credo and what makes that a social enterprise? So I got into the social enterprise world through Downtown Credo, which uh, realized that if we paid attention to supply chains, then your morning cup of coffee could be a, a way to make a positive impact in the world. And so based here in Orlando, we worked hard to k get as closely connected to very small scale growers as we could of coffee starting in Guatemala and then in Chiapas, Mexico, and source that coffee directly, get as much money into their hands as we could, and then let customers here in Orlando name their price. And the intention for letting them name their price was so that they would think about and own their place in the supply chain and realize that every purchase has a potential to make a positive impact in the world. And then running downtown Credo and like learning about the potential to have an impact through market facing profit generating businesses got me really motivated to try and help other people start businesses that leave a positive impact in the world. And that's what Rally does. We are trying to support early stage social entrepreneurs with the kind of mentorship and strategy that positions them for their next step, whether that's strategic investment or partnership or the first customer or launch or growth scaling. So we, I run Rally as the COO, and then I still run Downtown Credo. We have two coffee shops here in Orlando. There's a lot of ways entrepreneurial thinking can address global poverty. The first things that come to mind is a book that was recommended to me by a Rollins professor here working on social enterprise called Out of Poverty, which talks about the trap of NGOs attempting to deliver solutions to people in poverty that don't work in developing countries or in positions of extreme poverty. And the beauty of addressing challenges of poverty with entrepreneurial thinking is it forces you to deliver something of value to the customer. So the book out, the first thing is if I think about entrepreneurial thinking, addressing the issue of global poverty, it's how can we collaborate with the poor, right? How can we create things that the poor need to advance themselves? And in that book, he uses the example of subsistence level farmers and coming up with wells and water just irrigation systems that he can produce cheaply enough that people living on a dollar a day can afford to buy and they will spend their money on it because it increases their productivity. So in the first thing is like in the direct outreach to the poor anywhere in the world, entrepreneurial thinking is powerful because it forces you to understand your beneficiary. As an entrepreneur and as someone who is mentoring and giving mentoring to other entrepreneurs, what are those wow moments that have to take place for that mindset to transform context as opportunity instead of context as an obstacle, which is something that entrepreneurs face frequently in Mexico. What are your thoughts on that, Ben? I like that a lot. Context as opportunity instead of context as obstacle. So there is a point, I can remember the point for me, I had decided that the way I could make an impact was through the coffee supply chain. And in order to do that, I needed to open a coffee shop. I had done a little bit of marketing market analysis and realized that Orlando was ready for this kind of coffee shop. And I had found the building that I thought would work really great. I found a lease structure that made sense. And then our local municipality didn't like the way I wanted to use the building and was like talking about how I would have to build new bathrooms. And there were these challenges coming up that I knew I didn't have the dollars for. And it was presenting itself as an obstacle. But I can remember very clearly the point in my head where I had decided, even if they tell me I have to build these bathrooms, I don't know how I'm going to solve the problem. They can't put a, a roadblock in front of me that I won't climb over. And it's interesting in working with entrepreneurs through Rally, we take 10, well, 20 to 24 a year. It's hard to know whether you can teach that kind of mindset. So what we try and do when we're working with entrepreneurs is connect them deeply to an area of passion. So we're working with social entrepreneurs specifically. So part of our intake is how are you connected to the problem that you're trying to solve? So it's more difficult 
to build that kind of, we would call it grit or resiliency, that like tenacity to turn an obstacle into an opportunity. It's harder to get there if you just had a cool idea or a quick way to make money. But if you want to start something that you believe in or can connect the quick way to make money to something you to believe in, then you are able to kind of generate that grit or resiliency to really try and solve the problem. So I would say when people are thinking about entrepreneurially, how they want to start something, they want to build something, the more closely they can align it with areas of passion for themselves. Y padre, the world calls.